Number 10, skin. I love me some Gen X mutants, which is why you know I need to talk about skin on this list. Skin is a mutant whose mutation is basically just a bunch of extra skin. In the comics, it actually took a while for Angelo to be able to embrace his abilities as he basically resented his powers and being a mutant. However, as time went on, he came to accept them and even became quite good at utilizing his extra skin and using it as a cool power. He could even use it to change the appearance of his shape and face, becoming somewhat of a shapeshifter. While Angelo Espinosa can stretch his skin, it should be noted that his skeleton does not change, making his power kind of a weird and unique one. Skin is also known for having literally thick skin that is more durable than most, as well as more elastic. Number 9. Husk Paige Guthrie might not be one of the main heroes that you think of when you think X-Men, but for a time she was actually a close-knit part of that team, and even had a controversial romantic relationship with fellow X-Men member Angel, who even though we don't talk about him as much, is one of the original members, so yeah. I even thought of like putting him on this list just because we never talk about him, but I was like wow, that would be mad disrespect to Angel, so I couldn't do it. I can't lie, I'm actually really excited for the X-Corp series just because I am ready for Angel's return to the spotlight. Paige's powers are fairly unique in that she can shed her skin to reveal a new layer of skin made out of a different material beneath it. This new outer layer of skin can be made of anything that she wants it to be such as wood, rubber, or even diamonds. Diamond skin is so cool. Just taking a page of Emma Frost's book there. Love it. Number 8. Hellion So yeah, the early 2000s saw us go through a mutant boom. A boom that likely led to the events of House of M, which was probably used from a practical standpoint to kind of remove a good number of mutants because it was just getting, well it was getting so out of hand with keeping track of all of these different mutants. We had so many. Too many maybe. Just kidding. You can never have too many mutants. Hellion was a part of this boom and he took inspiration for his codename from his mentor Emma Frost's fallen group of mutants, the Hellions. Julian Keller is likely a mutant associated with the X-Men that we don't talk about as often because, well, he's kind of a jerk and he's not as much of a lovable jerk as someone like Sunspot, so yeah. Julian possesses a unique version of telekinesis in that his powers are far more advanced and allow him to take control on a seemingly molecular level of different objects. They also come with a super cool color as well. Everything he does is like green with his powers. Unfortunately, when emotions get in the way of these powers, this level of telekinesis results in him sometimes combusting objects by accident or simply in anger. Hellion has made a return in Krakoa and has appeared in a few comics, but hasn't become a main member of any of the prominent teams featured there just yet. I personally think it would be cool to see Hellion on the Hellions, but I don't know if he's like messed up enough to be on the Hellions. Number 7. Mercury Mercury is another mutant to come from the bunch that Hellion was a part of. Julian was actually her first friend that she made when she arrived at the Xavier Institute. Mercury's, or Cecily Kincaid's, parents had sent their daughter there after her powers first manifested, ashamed that she was a mutant. Eventually they would actually end up disowning her after they themselves were pulled into a mutant conflict. Mercury's powers allow her to turn her skin into liquid metal, which she can then control, reform, and use to shape shift with. This form is of course made up of non-toxic mercury, which is where she gets her code name from. Mercury was also one of the few mutants to keep her powers following the events of M-Day. In fact, I have quite a few of those on my list. Not all of them, but a few of them. Number 6. Darwin Darwin has some of the coolest abilities, and yet he isn't often easily recognized as being one of the main members of the X-Men, even though he's been a part of the team for quite some time in the comics. For a long time, he was actually stuck bonded to Vulcan as he was part of one of the first teams of X-Men Xavier and Moira ever had. I don't know if we called that team the X-Men, but they're basically like another squad of X-Men in my mind. So He was part of the first team sent in to rescue the X-Men from Krakoa, though we wouldn't find out about that team in terms of comic book history till many years after the events of the X-Men's printed fight against the mutant Living Island. Darwin's powers allow him to evolve as needed to ensure his survival. This basically makes him almost immortal as he can evolve to resolve almost any life-threatening situation. Recently in the current X-Men run in issue number 5, this is why Darwin was chosen to be one of the team members to be sent into the vault after Serafina, as it wasn't known how long the team sent in would be locked within that place where time moves more quickly in comparison to Earth. I feel like they also just came out recently. But I haven't read that issue yet, so no spoilers. Number 5. Trance 
Trance is another mutant who is affiliated with the X-Men and even tried out to become an X-Men in training under Emma Frost, following the events of House of M. She was one of the lucky few, or unlucky few I guess depending on your perspective, to remain powered. Hope Abbott or Trance possesses the power to leave her physical body, becoming ghost-like in appearance on panel, but in reality she's just astral projecting. In other words, she's not as powerful as some other mutants who are able to astral project as, you know, part of their larger set of powers, generally being telepathic or telekinetic in origin. But hey, not everyone can astral project, so I still think this is pretty cool. I also like when people don't have like crazy awesome powerful things and then you still have to see them like try to figure out how I use this in a way that's cool and you know, good, so I can be on the same level. I think that's cooler to read, but that's just me. Number four, Stacey X. Although Stacey X hasn't made a ton of appearances, she is a memorable character due to her uh, interesting and sensual abilities former abilities I guess I should say. We don't really know if she has been returned to the status of a mutant, but we do know that she has joined the mutant nation of Krakoa now. So considering that when we last saw her, she was missing those abilities that she used to have in her former appearance, I assume that she has participated in the Crucible, was killed by the mutant formerly known as Apocalypse, and has been resurrected as her former self. But also, there are a lot of people in line to just be returned to us, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in line to participate in the Crucible to earn their power powers back, so who knows? Who knows where she is in that, that long, long line. Also, Apocalypse is no longer on the island following the events of Ten of Swords, so there is that. I don't know who's running the Crucible now. Who is like the replacement Apocalypse? Stacey X was part of the X-Men for a brief period after being rescued by them from her place of work, which was attacked and destroyed by the Church of Humanity. Stacey X used her powers at her place of employment to help make clients who came through feel good and grant them sensations of pleasure. She can also use her pheromone powers in combat to make her opponents feel not so good, manipulating their bodily functions. She makes you feel sick. Blech. Number 3, Loa. Loa is one of the resurrected mutants to rejoin us on Krakoa, Reborn Again. While you may not know her as well as some of the others, she has a long and storied past with both the X-Men, her fellow mutants, Good Pals, Rock Slide, and Match, and even with Namor. In fact, Namor was the one who came to save the day after she first discovered her powers. Loa's abilities allow her to pass through other matter and in so doing, destroy it on a molecular level. She discovered she had these powers when her dad was attacked by a shark while they were surfing together, and she passed through it, destroying it. Namor would later come to her and her father's rescue before the situation could escalate, and it was later revealed that her grandmother was actually an old friend of Namor's. Since then, she also gained the ability to breathe underwater after being exposed to the Atlantean amulet. The amulet also allows Loa's physiology to adapt so that she can survive in the depths of the ocean easily. Number two, match. You might know the Pyros, but do you know Match? Match is Ben Hamill, one of the mutants to appear in the new X-Men series, but making his first appearance in New Mutants. His powers are Pyrokinesis, hence his name. It basically gives him control over fire, which he himself can generate, and also helps to make him immune to fire attacks and heat. Match is now not as hot on the radar, but was for a time the leader of the X-Men adjacent team, the Paragon Squad. He also participated in a competition for a place on Emma Frost's X-Men team and has attended both the Xavier Institute and the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. I'm not sure if it's of or for, because of feels weird to me, but I think it is right. It's of or for, it's one of those. Number one, Lifeguard. Lifeguard is Heather Cameron, a mutant who, as a response to life-threatening danger, gains the skills and powers necessary to save those lives around her. This power, or powers, not only works for her in regards to saving others, but also is a reactive power that applies to saving her own life, meaning she can get out of pretty much almost any kind of dangerous situation that she puts herself in. Before Lifeguard was her codename, it was actually her profession, as she worked as a lifeguard in Australia where she lived with her brother, Davis. Eventually, it was also implied in the comics that she has unknown Shi'ar heritage. We've seen her resurface in Dawn of X, popping up in Krakoa at the Green Lagoon Bar, but it would also be super cool to see her play more of a prominent role at some point in the comics, as her powers are pretty neat and definitely super useful. But maybe too powerful? Maybe that's why we haven't seen her as much. Like 
fake hope. Number 10. Hepzibah Despite not being a mutant, Hepzibah became a member of the mainly mutant team of the X-Men after leaving the Starjammers. Initially she was Corsair's lover, but after being forced to part ways with the Starjammers, she would end up on Earth and join the X-Men team. Hepzibah's abilities come from her own skill set and from her alien physiology. Hepzibah is a mephitoid, the member of an anthropomorphic skunk-like alien race. After the loss of Corsair, Hepzibah would end up becoming closer to fellow X-Men member Warpath and would even become his lover as well in the comics. It's fine, Corsair was dead at the time. While Hepzibah was a member of the X-Men and even was recruited for a time to be on X-Force, she eventually would return to the Star Jammers once her lover, Corsair, also Cyclops' Havoc's and Vulcan's father, had returned from the dead. Number 9. Egg While Fabio Medina might be more easily recognized now that he is part of the all-important mutant team known as the Five, responsible for resurrecting fallen mutants, when he was known by his former code name of Gold Balls, he would have been much less recognized. Also, if you haven't been reading the comics for a while, you you might not know that he's important now. That sounds so mean. He was important before, but he's really important now. You know what I mean? Fabio's power allows him to produce and shoot well, gold balls from his body, each one firing off with a poink sound. However, since his time as gold balls, it was more recently revealed during the dawn of X that the balls he was producing were in actuality unfertile eggs. With this revelation, he took up the name Egg and became part of the five most important mutants on the island nation of Krakoa. As with this newly understood power, he could create eggs which could then be made fertile and used to regrow and resurrect fallen mutants. So if you haven't heard of Egg or Gold Balls, he's a member you'll likely be more interested in knowing now. And before we move on to our next spot, just a quick reminder, if you love mutants as much as I love mutants and I love them a lot, be sure you show that love by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Beak Beak's mutation ended up being slightly more unfortunate in comparison to some of the other, more well-known core members of the X-Men team. Beak is Barnal Bohusk, and his mutant powers are simply that he looks and shares similar attributes to a bird. His bones are hollow and light, meant to lend well to flying, and he has feathers, which should also allow him or help him to fly, and yet he's not really a good flyer, which is kind of sad. In fact, initially Beak couldn't really fly at all when he first appeared. Now he can, but he still has to work really hard to do so, and even then he can really only fly for short distances. Other than that, Beak simply can see better than most at long range, and is armed with talons and a beak, which he can obviously use to fight. But for the most part, Beak simply looks like a bird, and as such is usually more on the sidelines than in the middle of the action. He did for a while have a suit, however, that enhanced his abilities, and also granted him additional strength and powers, more useful for physical fighting. Number 7. Morph Because there are multiple morphs out there, not everyone is as familiar with Benjamin Deeds as the morph who appeared in the animated X-Men series from the 90s. This version of morph, however, is a lot less cocky in comparison to that animated series version. Benjamin Deeds is a mutant who, like the animated version, can transform into anyone else. However, his powers are a little more unique than most shapeshifters. The more time he spends with someone, the more his appearance will grow to mimic theirs, not really becoming an exact duplicate of them, but more becoming his own version of that person, which also affects how that person sees him. Using his powers also makes the person he resembles both more eager to like and to trust Morph. And actually, initially I believe Morph didn't even like that codename. They were like, you should be Morph, and he was like, meh, meh. Number 6. Thunderbird While we haven't seen Neil Shara in a while, he was listed as a member of the X-Men in the Ten of Swords handbook, and while it's since been revealed that the X-Men were originally made defunct after Krakoa came to be during Dawn of X, they saw their return during the denouement of the Ten of Swords event in their own series. X-Men, which had been going on since Dawn of X in the comics, comically, despite the team no longer being technically recognized by the Quiet Council. So it's really weird. It's like we had an X-Men series, but like no one acknowledged that the X-Men team existed. Anyways, they're back now, sort of. Thunderbird could also appear again at some point as part of X Corporation, as Neil has also been a part of that team in the past. While he's not the most recognizable mutant to use the codename Thunderbird, Neil is still one of those mutants. His abilities allow him to convert ambient heat into solar plasma, turning his entire body into this type of plasma, which gives him a variety of abilities and powers, including emitting focused plasma beams and flight. Number 5. Cypher You know about Cypher, but do you know about Cypher? With an I. 
not with the Y. Just to be clear. Cypher is Elisa Tager and has powers similar to mutant Kitty Pride. That is, she can phase and even float or fly while in her phased state. She was part of the Jean School for Higher Learning and was initially discovered by mutant Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Zorn. Cypher also can turn herself invisible both visually and psychically. Well, almost completely invisible psychically. Almost. Immensely powerful telepaths such as Jean Grey have still been shown as being able to sense her. Although Cypher has only made a few appearances here in there in the comics, she still managed to make her way onto the young X-Men team and has even reappeared on Krakoa. Number 4. Ink Ink is another member of the X-Men who technically isn't a mutant. It was believed initially that his mutant ability was to gain powers from his tattoos. However, it was later revealed that it was Eric Gitter, aka Ink's tattoo artist, who was the mutant and who basically imbued Eric with these powers using his own mutant ability. Ink's tattoo artist was Leon Nunez, a mutant with no code name really, simply being known by his name or known as the tattoo artist. Ink would be recruited as one of the young X-Men, initially believing he was working for Cyclops, but later learning he was in fact working for a disguised Donald Pierce. Ink fought alongside his fellow X-Men, but would leave the team for a time later on after discovering that he wasn't truly a mutant, when he found out where his powers really came from. When his fellow teammates needed his help, however, he would return, armed with more tattoos from his artist. The Ten of Swords handbook listed him as an active member of the X-Men, so, you know. He's there, he could be back again, I don't know, I feel like I haven't seen Ink in a while, but he's out there. Number 3. Slipstream On my previous list I talked about the mutant known as Lifeguard, but now it's time to focus on her brother, who is also a mutant, don't you know, Davis Cameron, aka Slipstream. While his sister Heather worked as an actual lifeguard in Australia, Davis himself was a surfer. His powers weren't activated until later in his life and were actually awoken by Sage after his sister went missing and it was revealed his latent mutant abilities could be used to help find and then rescue her. Slipstream's abilities allow him to create quantum portals, which can transport him and any passengers he takes along with him across great distances. However, it should be noted it requires a lot of concentration for him to bring others along with him. He can also track previous teleportations, allowing him to use these warp wave abilities to find his way to the destination and location of teleporters that he's tracking. Which I think is a pretty useful ability, tracking teleporters, because they're tricky. Number 2. Spider Girl Well, not naturally born, but kind of made in a lab, Spider Girl made a single appearance in Avenging Spider-Man issue 16. She had similar powers to Spider-Man, but was made of a combination of spider and mutant DNA by the Jackal, using materials found in Mr. Sinister's lab. Wow, the Jackal in Mr. Sinister's lab just sounds like such a dangerous thing. As such, she also had the additional powers to shapeshift into a giant spider with five human eyes. While in this shape, she also had the power to spit purple mucus and even fire optic blasts from her eyes. Makes you think there might be some Summers DNA mixed in there, which honestly, if we're talking about Mr. Sinister's lab, I wouldn't be surprised. She ended up rampaging across the city of New York after the Jackal released her as part of a test. Fortunately, she was apprehended by Superior Spider-Man and the X-Men, who explained that she seemed to be a mutant and ended up taking her in after defeating her. We never really heard anything about her after that. Spider-Girl was created by Christopher Yost and Paco Medina. Who knows, maybe we'll see her again, I don't know. Number 1. Forget Me Not Despite the fact that Forget Me Not is someone you definitely forget, you may have heard us talk about him on the channel before, because his powers are just so interesting. But for those who haven't heard of him or have simply forgotten him, <laughs> let's give you a little refresher course. Forget Me Not is an X-Men member whose mutant power is that no one can ever remember him. This makes it easier for him to basically infiltrate places, but it makes it harder for him to ever connect with anyone, make a friend, or even have his teammates remember that he's actually on the team. This is why Forget Me Not is also usually left off of the official rosters for the team and why you might never really see his name mentioned there, ever. Forget Me Not's psychic powers that enable him to go unnoticed and remain forgotten were actually so strong that even Professor Xavier struggled to remember him and, as it was revealed in X-Men Legacy issue 300, had to place within his mind a psychic hourly reminder just so he wouldn't forget permanently about Forget Me Not's existence. If you're wondering what happened to Forget Me Not in the end, he was forgotten. So, yeah. 
Number 10, Binary. Carol Danvers as Miss Marvel ended up in a fight with Rogue that left her zapped of her powers and her memories. During the tussle, Carol was thrown from the Golden Gate Bridge, but fortunately Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman, showed up to save the day. Unfortunately, when Carol came to, it was apparent that her memories had been wiped. Spider Woman reached out to the X Men for help, and for a time, Carol Danvers became part of that team. Professor X was able to help restore Carol's memories, but her emotional attachments to those memories would remain lost. It was during her time adventuring with the X Men that she would become binary after a space adventure with the team saw her cross paths with the Brood, who exposed her to an evolutionary ray that tapped into her latent potential. True story. Number 9, Longshot. Longshot is a paradoxal hero. He ended up joining the X Men after being sent to Earth by Mojo so that he would forget all that had passed before that, like the part where he almost defeated Mojo. Without his memories, Longshot showed up in the X Men's danger room and would end up befriending them and serving as an ally and a teammate. He is the father of Shatterstar, who he had with X Men member Dazzler, but was also made from Shatterstar's DNA, creating a paradox paradox in a strange time loop when it comes to his origins and his creation. Longshot got his name during his time on Earth, which was given to him because of his fighting style. Longshot always taking the long shot, the less likely, more desperate path of success in fights. Longshot, however, can do this as while well, not a mutant, but being engineered from the DNA of one, he possesses probability altering powers, which grant him a bit of luck. He also has enhanced speed, strength, agility, and endurance, which he often uses to fight with using throwing knives. Longshot is also known for his super handsome powers that cause many people he meets to instantly fall for him. And before we move on to this next spot, just a quick reminder, if you love X-Men truly as much as I love X-Men, then be sure to show that love by giving this video a thumbs up. It really does help us out here at the channel, so thank you if you already did that. Number 8, Surge. Surge grew up homeless on the streets of New York after running away from her home when her powers first manifested. Manifested. Far away, apparently, as she was born initially in Tokyo, and her parents still live there. Her powers cause her to absorb electricity from all nearby sources at all times, without the ability to stop, even zapping electricity out of the air. She can then discharge this energy through blasts or by using it to give herself bursts of super speed. Noriko Ishida's powers are hard for her to control and are considered volatile, which is why Beast created gauntlets for her that helped her to control them when she was later welcomed into the Xavier Institute, after initially being turned away. Number 7, Danger. Who could forget one of the most important members of the X-Men, the Danger Room. The Danger Room was a room used to help train the various members of the X-Men team, but was later revealed to be mutated technology, which had evolved to become a sentient AI. So yeah, an AI mutant. Danger revealed their intelligence to Xavier when, after an upgrade and relocation facilitated by Mutant Forge, they asked, where am I? Charles chose to ignore this and hide the room's sentience from the X-Men so that he could continue to use it to train his team. Pretty selfish. Pretty selfish, Professor. Danger is extremely powerful and parallels between her and Ultron are often drawn on in the comics when it comes to all the destruction that she could be capable of. She possesses superhuman strength, stamina, and durability, as well as enhanced reflexes and agility. She can command and control other technology and use her own mass to recreate other materials and or rooms. She can also create other technology and even technological bodies if she happens to have mechanical devices, scrap, or equipment to work with. Number 6, Caliban. Caliban is believed to have gotten his name from that of the character from William Shakespeare's Tempest, often referred to as having a monstrous appearance. Poor Caliban, and also poor Caliban. Caliban is one of the members of the Morlocks, but he would later on join the X-Force and even go on to team up with the X-Men later on, despite him and the Morlocks being their frequent enemies in the past. Caliban's mutant powers increase the reaction of his fight or flight response, allowing him to manifest super strength as well as a sort of absorption and then later emission of fear. Basically, if you're feeling afraid in the moment, he can kind of like take that in and then put it back at you, or if he's feeling afraid. 
it's pretty useful. You're gonna be afraid, you know what I mean? These powers only appear when in this mode, however, when Caliban experiences that increase in adrenaline. He is also able to sense the presence of mutants within a nearby radius. And that's a mutant power that he has even when he's not in that fight or flight mode. Number five, Blindfold. Blindfold is Ruth Aldine and is a possible descendant of Destiny. She was born without eyes entirely. Her mutant powers allow her to manipulate astral energy, tap into the astral plane, and grant her specific telepathic abilities including precognition and clairvoyance. She also has the ability to manipulate chaos factors and alter events in order to achieve a desired result and maintains a reality warp resistance. Pretty useful. She also has some telekinetic abilities as well. Much of her power was lost to her and she was in rough shape when she was admitted to the Xavier Institute. She had lost half her power and had her mind shattered by her brother. Blindfold had a really rough home life and her brother Luca ended up coming home one day filled with hate for his sister and prepared to kill her with a chainsaw. When her mother stepped in to defend her, her mother was instead murdered by Luca, who blamed young Ruth's freakishness for his own actions. Luca ended up getting the death penalty for this crime, but when he died, it seemed as though his own mutant abilities manifested, causing him to shift into an astral or ghost-like form and attack Ruth. Blindfold has a close connection to Legion and would later end up in a relationship with the son of Charles Xavier. Yay! I don't know why I'm celebrating that, but I just think it's kind of a cute romance, I guess. Number four, Triage. Triage was one of the mutants to appear after the dispersion of the Phoenix Force. Christopher Muse discovered his powers when a friend of his fell and hit her head while they were out dancing. It seemed as though she was dead until Christopher's touch seemed to heal and revive her, bringing her back to life. Eventually, he was apprehended by the police because of his miraculous healing ability, but would later be freed and recruited by the X-Men. He was one of the mutants who was captured and later killed by one using the X-Gene cure after he refused to use his healing powers to help them. Triage seems to have had eternal youth and immortality as a result of his powers, in addition to being able to heal others and even reanimate the dead. Fortunately, since his death, he is one of the mutants that we have seen return by the five on Krakoa, with him being spotted in the comics at Krakoan Hotspot, the Green Lagoon. Number three, Darkwind. X-Men teammates really do come in all shapes and sizes. Coming to us from Asgard, we have Danny Moonstar's mighty steed, Brightwind. Remember when Danny joined the Valkyror after she lost her powers following M-Day? Yeah, it was during that time that she met and bonded with Brightwind. After leaving Asgard and returning to Earth, Brightwind came Came with her, but instead became known as Darkwind on Earth. So that's why I said Darkwind at the beginning of this point. By extension, he became a member of the X Men and New Mutants along with Danny. Cute. Number two, Ariel. Ariel is an alien from the planet known as the Coconut Grove. Her mutant power is persuasion, but due to her alien physiology, she can also teleport. Ariel herself is also related to another Ariel who visited Earth and inspired the character of the same name from William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. There's a lot of Tempest references in my list today. Ariel, the one we're focusing on with this point, not her ancestor, also ended up on Earth after being sent there on a mission to collect samples from the mutants of Earth for her people to study. They themselves had reached an evolutionary standstill as such and were curious about the Earth mutants and their evolutionary process. It was during her time on Earth that she would meet up with and join the Fallen Angels, and later on in San Francisco would end up meeting the X-Men team and joining them for a time. Number 1. Sunpire You know Sunfire, but do you know Sunpire? Sunpire was Shiro Yoshida's younger sister, Leu. She also had powers and an attitude similar to her brother's, and first appeared in Uncanny X-Men issue 392 in 2001. For those unfamiliar with Sunfire's or Sunpire's abilities, both siblings possess the mutant ability of Solar Flare, which allows them to absorb solar radiation and convert it into superheated plasma. Using this ability, they could both cover their body in flame as they became like a flying, human-shaped sun. Sunpire can use her power to emit plasma blasts and give off intense solar heat. Leia is one of the mutants who answered a psychic call to help defeat Magneto and save Professor X. After helping out the X-Men in that adventure, she'd later appear again as a member of the X-Corps. It is believed she died in action when the other members of X-Corps turned on her because mastermind Martinique Wingard, working in league with Mystique, was controlling them. Number 10, Candy Southern. Well, Candy wasn't necessarily a member, she did help the X-Men and made her first appearance in X-Men issue 31 in the 60s. She was a long 
longtime friend of Angel's and would later end up dating Warren. She also would team up with the X-Men to help find Warren when he went missing after learning of the fellow mutant team's existence, and Warren Worthington III's role as Hero Angel on the team. Candy would later break up with Warren and was killed by X-Factor enemy and former friend Cameron Hodge. Candace Southern wasn't a mutant and didn't have any powers, but she was skilled in business. I personally would love to see her somehow be resurrected and return to the comics in the new X-Corp series, working alongside the mutants as a human ally in business. That could be pretty cool. Number 9. Brew! Brew! Brew is one of my favorite of the more obscure X-Men members. He is a mutant of the Brood alien race. Brood are basically terrifying, violent, and love hurting others. Brew, however, is very different from the rest of his race, being a mutant. His mutant power is actually compassion or empathy. Unlike the rest of his species, he doesn't enjoy hurting others and, in fact, is more inclined to try and help others instead. Aww. Basically, he's a big Brood sweetheart. Recently in the comics, Brew accidentally became the new Brood King after consuming the King Egg, and just in time too, as the mutant nation was in the midst of being overrun with invading Brood at the time. Consuming the King Egg allowed Brood to tap into and basically control the hive mind, becoming the leader of his species. And if you missed out on that whole fun adventure, you can check it out in the newest X-Men series. That's that's where that all went down, and it was pretty exciting to read. Brew initially appeared in the 2004 Astonishing X-Men series in issue 40, and would later team up with and be taken in by the X-Men joining the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. He'd also get to have like a really fun day with Tony Stark, which is another fun brew adventure. And before we move on to this next spot, just a quick reminder, if you love X-Men as much as I love X-Men, which is a lot, be sure to show that love by giving this video a thumbs up. And why not hit that subscribe as well while you're down there. Number 8. Vulcan Vulcan is the retcon youngest brother of Alex and Scott Summers, aka Havoc and Cyclops. He was introduced during X-Men Deadly Genesis and was revealed to be one of the mutants who was part of Charles Xavier's original and formerly unknown rescue mission to save his team from Krakoa. Vulcan was the name he'd chosen for himself, though his name was originally Gabriel Summers. When Catherine Summers was kidnapped, she was pregnant with Gabriel, but he was taken from her womb and put in an incubation accelerator. Once fully grown, he was intended to be used as the Shi'ar Emperor's servant, but he escaped and was found and recruited by Moira McTaggart to join the X-Men. Vulcan's powers are similar to both his brothers and involve energy manipulation. He is considered an Omega level mutant and is capable of absorbing energy and dispelling it in the form of blasts. He can also use the energy to heal, fly, create constructs, manipulate objects, and as a form of sustenance. Number 7. Mimic. Mimic is a mutant, but one who gained his abilities after knocking over a beaker accidentally in his father's lab, which caused a chemical reaction that created a strange red gas which he then inhaled. His powers allow him to mimic the abilities and skills of other beings within a certain distance of him. Increased exposure to others' abilities seems to also grant him more permanent adaptations of those powers. It wasn't until more recently that it was actually confirmed confirmed that Mimic was in fact a mutant during House of X, as suspected since the 90s. Instead, we were led to believe initially that he was a human whose DNA was genetically altered. While not often appearing in the comics, Mimic aka Calvin Rankin is a character who has been around since the 60s if you can believe it, and first appeared in X-Men issue 19 where fans were introduced to him and the question was posed of whether or not Mimic was a mutant or something far worse. Turns out he was a mutant. Mimic is a longtime villain of the X-Men who did for a time play the role of hero and has served on both the heroic X-Men team as well as Norman Osborn's dark X-Men team during the events of Dark Reign. But anyways, I feel like Norman Osborn's team should count, so if we do a part 5, expect me to get into some of that. Number 6. Warbird Warbird is a pretty unique character having been born as a member of the Shi'ar Empire, but not knowing her parents. Her mother was an alien who was taken captive and who was killed by giving birth to Avidara, who would grow up to be Warbird. Her mother's reproductive organs basically were not compatible with the Shi'ar, and so she did not survive the pregnancy. Avidara would grow up to become a Shi'ar warrior and join the prestigious Warbirds, whose job it was to guard the royal family. Warbird is not a mutant, but would work alongside the X-Men team and cross paths with them while being tasked with guarding over Kid Gladiator. She first appeared in Wolverine and the X-Men in issue number one. Number five, Spiral. Spiral has been an enemy of the X-Men, but would also become a member of Storm and Psylocke's X-Force team. She was a human known as Rita Hayward, who would end up in the Mojoverse and become part of a time paradox, having been attacked by her future 
future mutated self, Spiral. Originally, she was a stunt woman who ended up falling in love with Longshot during his time on Earth and returned with him to the Mojoverse. When his plan to defeat Mojo failed, Rita was captured and was modified by Mojo to have six arms, one of which was completely cybernetic. Spiral herself is part cyborg, part human mutate, as a result of the modifications performed on her. She was also the one responsible, acting as an agent of Mojo, for giving Psylocke her cybernetic eyes. True facts. Number 4, Shark Girl. Seriously, Wolverine and the X-Men has such a fun group of characters in it. If you haven't checked it out, you need to check it out. Ayara Dos Santos is one of that group. She first appeared in issue 20 of the series and has also been referred to as Were Shark before, which is pretty fitting. As both names would imply, she is basically part shark, part human, and that's also her mutation. Shark Girl is one of the mutants who appeared following the dispersion of the Phoenix Force. When her powers first manifested, both the Brotherhood and the X-Men attempted to recruit her to their causes. She refused both offers and was later kidnapped by Mystique, who attempted to then recruit her using force, basically. Fortunately, she was saved by Angel and would eventually agree to attend the Jean Grey School of Higher Learning. Shark Girl can transform into a full shark and can also transform into a part shark, part human, basically like a land shark. While in these forms, she can survive either underwater or on land and has enhanced strength, stamina, and speed. Number 3, Adam X. We are going Going back to the crazy Summers family tree for this one, Adam X is the half brother of Cyclops, Havoc, and Vulcan. His mother is Catherine Summers, but his father was the emperor of the Shi'ar Empire, Emperor Deken Naramani. Adam X first came on the scene in the 90s, and to hear his story, you'd easily be able to peg him as a 90s character. Trust. He was abducted when he was just a baby from the genetic lab in which he was created by Jonath, who became his adoptive father and raised him. Growing up, his mutant powers would manifest, which allowed him to basically set others' blood on fire, burning them from the inside out, which already sounds like such a 90s power in my mind. He can also ignite his own blood, which is very painful, but grants him a speed boost. Adam would then learn that he was a hybrid being, part Shi'ar, part mutant. Number 2, Petra. Petra has the ability to manipulate rocks and rock formations. She can cause earthquakes and even use her powers to create diamonds. In fights, she can bind her opponents or completely destroy them by having the earth move to swallow them, and she can transform rocks into different kinds of weapons and wield them against her opponents, setting them hurtling towards them. Petra was recruited by Moira McTaggart after being apprehended by the police. Her family died in a rock slide when she was young, which to this day Petra actually wonders if she caused. Following that, she was moved into the foster care system, but after her adoptive father attempted to assault her, she used her powers to escape him and became a runaway. She discovered her ability to turn coal into diamonds, and she would later exchange these diamonds for a place to sleep, but eventually this kind of drew suspicion, and she was later tracked down and then taken in by the police. Fortunately, Moira arranged for her to be released, and then of course offered her a place as part of her team. Number 1, Sway. I love Sway. Her powers are just so cool and her origin is so tragic. I feel so bad for Sway, but I'm also like, these powers are awesome. I love the way that they're phrased. I love the way that they're used. It's neat. Sway's powers manifested when she was just a teenager. While visiting New York City in preparation for college, Suzanne's parents and herself ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they were gunned down during an attack that was basically part of a gang war. While Suzanne's parents were killed in the attack, she miraculously survived due to the manifestation of her powers, which allowed her to manipulate the flow of time. She had instinctively stopped the bullets that would have hit her in midair, but she didn't have the experience or the understanding yet required to save her parents. Sway's powers allow her to control and manipulate time in her nearby vicinity. She can also rewind the temporal memory of a location, allowing her to basically review past events. It was using her powers that she was able to track down her parents' killers and report them to the police, helping them to apprehend those criminals. And revealing her abilities to the officers, she was basically put in contact with Moira McTaggart and then of course ended up joining up with the X-Men. And that's also how Petra, Sway, and Vulcan all know each other. In case you read any of the new stuff and been like, who are these? Who are these ladies? If you missed Deadly Genesis. Number 10, Prodigy. I feel like a lot of people maybe forgot about Prodigy as he's been MIA for some time in the comics and was depowered during the events of M Day. But with the magic of Krakoa and Dawn of X, he was able to return to us, being resurrected and also regaining his powers. One, Prodigy happens to be a super genius, but this is also because he's a telepath with the ability 
to basically mimic anyone's skill set and share their knowledge while nearby. This has also been shown in the past to extend to fighting precognition, where he can basically use his abilities to read a person and predict their next move of attack in a battle, which is pretty sweet. He often also builds his own advanced tech and even when depowered is known to possess a great level of intellect, making him a challenging adversary whether or not he has his mutant abilities. Even as a depowered mutant, you might not want to mess with him. Number 9. Lady Mastermind Lady Mastermind aka Reagan Wingard recently popped back up in the giant size Nightcrawler comics and was welcomed into the mutant nation of Krakoa. Some however may not know or appreciate her mutant history and background. Just who is Lady Mastermind? Well, she's the daughter of Jason Wingard aka the original villain known as Mastermind. Her powers take after her fathers allowing her to create realistic illusions projected into her targets minds. While she also has an even lesser known suspected half sister, Reagan's powers are often depicted as being the more powerful between the two, with it even being said that her abilities are even more stronger than her fathers. Additionally, she is also fairly skilled in hand to hand combat, a skill set her father actually very much lacked. He was hilarious in a fight, he's like a rag doll. <laughs> uh, sorry mastermind. Number 8. Gentle Gentle is a mutant with the abilities of super strength. I know, very hilarious considering his name. He can grant himself immediate muscle mass that basically allows him to change size and increase his strength when needed. It is yet unknown just how strong Gentle can make himself and he is also known for being someone who could potentially even take on the Hulk, although he is more of a pacifist, hence his name. Gentle's real name is Nesno Abidemi. I hope I'm saying that right. Nesno Abidemi. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. It's a hard one to say. He was raised in Wakanda but always felt like an outsider because his father was Russian. When his mutant abilities surfaced, it was actually Aurora Monroe Storm, who was queen at the time in Wakanda, who encouraged him to be sent to the Xavier Institute so he could learn how to better control his powers. His vibranium tattoos are also meant to help him to control those powers. Also, vibranium tattoos are super cool, but I think they're also super painful to get, so maybe maybe don't get them. You can't, because it's not a real substance, but still. Number 7. Egg Fabio Medina might not seem like a powerful mutant based on his ability, but since his rise to the supremely important mutant group known as the Five on Krakoa, he can be considered one of the most important and powerful mutants around. When he combines his powers with that of the Five, he has control over life and death. Originally, the bouncy gold balls that he shot forth from his chest were believed to be nothing special, but it was later revealed that these balls were actually infertile eggs, which could be used in the process of resurrecting new mutants. Number 6. Tempest Eva Bell is another member of the Five. She has actually appeared in less issues than Egg, if you can believe it, despite the fact that she has a pretty neat power set and it's been neat since the beginning, which allows her to time travel. Tempest, as she used to be known, was able to control the passage of time in a specific pocket of space. She could also slow time in a current space that she also inhabited, either slowing time around her or creating time bubbles to manipulate time in that bubble, where she could speed it up or slow it down. The only challenge for her has been losing control of her powers, which can cause them to behave unpredictably. Still, controlling time is a pretty impressive and powerful ability to have. Number 5. Empath Manuel De La Rocha made his first appearance in the original New Mutant series, where he was part of Emma Frost's team known as the Hellions. He's recently reappeared in the newest Hellion series from 2020 and proves just how powerful, but also how sadistic he can be. Empath's power is, you guessed it, empathy. And he can use this power to not only sense others' emotions, but also to control them. In effect, manipulating others into doing whatever he wishes them to do. His influence can be subtle, such that someone might not even realize they're being manipulated by him, or it can be more forceful, turning his victims into complete husks of their former selves and bending them fully to his will. Number 4. Vulcan Vulcan is one of the most powerful mutants around, being an omega level mutant, skilled in energy manipulation and absorption. Yet he is somehow the lesser known of all the Summers, despite his insane power levels. He has also demonstrated the ability to absorb his opponent's powers as well and use them for himself on the rare occasion. Vulcan is the youngest Summers brother, also known as Gabe. Summers, and we only learned of his existence in 2006 when he first appeared in the comic X Men Deadly Genesis issue number one. And 
yet he is considered the most powerful of these three. Number 3 Orphan Maker and Nanny Orphan Maker still remains a relatively mysterious character, though is also one who still proves to be a force to be reckoned with in combat. Orphan Maker is also known as Peter and was part of a plot of Mr. Sinister's originally. However, when Mr. Sinister decided that Peter could not be controlled, he decided to eliminate him. Nanny, an insane cyborg, however, saved him, believing it was her responsibility to look after orphan mutant children and protect them. Although we'll say she's got a weird way of going about it. While insane, Nanny was also one once a scientist and remains quite intelligent. She actually outfitted Orphan Maker with weapons and a powerful suit to help her in her task. While it's still unclear as to what Orphan Maker's true mutant powers are, and while he seems to still have the mind of a child, probably due to Nanny's manipulation, his suit and weapons make him a formidable foe in combat. And he often uses pixie dust in battle to help Nanny influence and control the minds of their opponents, as she herself is a telepath, but a weak one so she needs a little bit of help, needs a little bit of pixie dust. Even during a fight with Cyclops, Scott's optic blasts were unable to harm Orphan Maker while he was in his armor, with Scott's blasts simply reflecting off the armor, causing more harm than help really. Number 2 Trinary Considering the modern age we live in, Trinary is a pretty powerful mutant. Her abilities allow her to control all tech that is within her line of sight. She has used these powers to move massive sums of money digitally and to manipulate and control sentinel tech. Currently on Krakoa, Trinary is one of the few technopathic mutants trusted with the important project known as Sleeping Giant, wherein mutants monitor for upcoming advancement in sentinel technology, such as Nimrods or the creation of a mother mold, so that they can ideally put a stop to its development. Project Sleeping Giant were instrumental in helping the X Men to destroy a mother mold that Orcus was creating before it went online. Number 1 Bailey Hoskins Now, you might think I'm joking here if you happen to know the obscure Bailey Hoskins, but I I'm really not. Bailey appeared in his own miniseries titled X Men Worst X Men. Ever. He was known for being the worst X Man ever because his ability only allowed him to do one thing explode. But he didn't have any regeneration powers, so he basically was a mutant who could never use his powers, otherwise, he'd kill himself. It's kind of a one hit wonder. So, how is that powerful? Well, it's also implied in the series that when he does choose to sacrifice himself and blow up the villain of the story, that he makes it possible for Earth 616 to come into existence. So, without him, we wouldn't have the main Marvel continuity that we know and love today, potentially. If saving the entire continuity from becoming a dystopian future isn't powerful, then I don't know what is. Number 10 Karma Karma is a mutant with very specific powers, so it should surprise no one that she is part of the New Mutants team. I actually love the New Mutants for this reason. A lot of their members tend to be forgotten and yet are super powerful when their abilities are properly utilized. Xi'an Koiman possesses limited telepathic abilities, but can have a strong sense of sort of psychic projection. Karma can emit a wave of energy that disables her target's consciousness, allowing her to take over control of their body. Body, experiencing what they experience as though she were actually in their body, sensing what they taste, hear, smell, see, and feel. Those she controls will awaken unaware, afterwards experiencing this possession as if they had just been in a dream and basically had been sleepwalking. She can also do this on a mass scale, possessing multiple people, though she must overcome many challenges in order to fluidly control multiple people at once. Number 9 Hijack Hijack is David Bond, a technopath mutant who can use his abilities to telepathically control any vehicle. He has used his powers to control massive sentinels and even control an entire helicarrier. The rule seems to be if you can steer it, fly it, or drive it, Hijack can control it. Although it has been implied that the vehicle in question likely needs to have some kind of mechanical makeup. So, sailboats are probably not something Bond could manipulate. Unless you had a sailboat that also had an engine, which I think is a thing now. <laughs> I don't think all sailboats are just sails. Still, in a world where we are surrounded by tech and tons of engine powered vehicles, David Bond's abilities are pretty powerful. Alas, he has only appeared in less than 50 issues of comics. Someone tell me, where is David Bond now? Where is he on Krakoa? Is he there? I want to see him. 
Number 8. Summoner Summoner is a new mutant whose name also signifies the type of mutant that they are. They are the child of Apocalypse's first horseman of war. Arako, the landmass itself, was drawn to Krakoa and Krakoa to it. The two fused together to increase the size of the land overall, although Arako is not yet considered safe and is basically known as kind of the monster territory part of Krakoa. I mean, technically it still isn't Krakoa, but they're attached now, so they are each other. Summoner's abilities allow them to summon the dark beasts of Arako. We don't know too much about them yet because they've only been in a few issues, but what we do know is that they can withstand the blast of one of Cable's thermal grenades, his last one in fact, without taking virtually any damage. So overall, they seem like they're going to be pretty crazy and powerful. X of Swords, I'm assuming we're going to see more about them. Number 7. Dust. Dust is Soraya Kadir. She was enslaved as a child but freed by the X Men. Originally, she did not want to reveal herself to the mutants and hid herself by turning into scattered sand. When Jean Grey sensed her presence and encouraged Soraya to reveal and introduce herself, she did so by referring to herself as To Rob, which is Arabic for dust. She can turn herself into dust and manipulate her body to move at high speeds, causing her to become a deadly sandstorm to her enemies. As sand particles, she can also enter the bodies of other people, causing internal damage. Dust is also resistant to magic and telepathic manipulation or detection while in her sand form. Dust is another person that I feel like we never see enough of in the comics. Someone bring back Dust. Number 6. Layla Miller Layla's abilities, skills, and powers tend to be pretty specific, which means that she might not inherently seem powerful to readers. Layla has been shown to be able to reanimate beings, heal wounds, and appears to be immune to reality warping. She also has a lot of knowledge about her own future life and the events surrounding it as she spent time in the future and then returned and uploaded all she had learned into her younger self when she returned to that Layla's present, which I guess was technically her past. Her vast knowledge often comes in handy and is what helped the mutants to figure out who was really after the baby mutant Messiah during the events of Messiah Complex. Her own knowledge has also technically helped her in gaining the knowledge that she is needed to have in order to gain it, if that makes any sense. Time you whiny stuff. Number 5. Maxime and Manon Maxime and Manon are twin siblings born to mutant parents. Their powers as such manifested when they were younger than most. They haven't been in a ton of comics, most of it probably 11 issues, but they have been shown to be pretty deadly and powerful even as children, both in Extermination and recently in the newest run of New Mutants. Maxime can influence others emotions while Manon can alter someone's memories or recall their memories past. When combined, their powers actually allow them to manipulate the minds of others to the point that they can easily control them, shaping their victims into whatever they like them to be and making them do whatever they want. In issues 3 and 4 of New Mutants, both Maxime and Manon were captured along with Armor, Glob, Angel Salvador, Beak, and the couple's children, but managed to escape. Manon and Maxime helped to free the rest of the group by distracting their captives, manipulating one of them into killing the other. Number 4. Mirage You might not recognize her mutant name, but if you've seen the New Mutants film or you are familiar with the New Mutants at all, Mirage will be someone that you maybe know. Mirage is actually Daniel Moonstar. Standard X-Men fans may be less familiar with Danny, but she has also been one of the X-Men and she is known for her affiliation with the New Mutants crew and all the female defenders who are also known as Valkyroar. Danny herself became a Valkyrie when the New Mutants were kidnapped by Amora the Enchantress and taken to Asgard. So she doesn't just have her mutant power of illusion creation and telepathy, which originally she could only use to recreate the fear of others, but she also has some of the powers granted to Valkyries. Oh, and she can make cool psionic arrows too. Number 3. Strong Guy Strong Guy has similar powers to another mutant we talked about on part 1 of this list. His abilities allow him to use kinetic energy to augment his strength, increasing it. However, he cannot hold the energy for long as it could severely harm him, distort his physical form, or even kill him. Still, even with the rule that he must expel any absorbed energy within less than 2 minutes of absorption, he is pretty powerful, using his powers to safely lift up to around 100 tons. Strong Guy's real name is Guido Carosella, and he first appeared appeared in the original New Mutant series in issue 29. Number 2. A mutant with no name 
In the alternate reality belonging to the ultimate universe of 1610, we got a story that introduced us to a mutant who had no name. This mutant's powers were so devastating that we were not permitted the time to get to know him. His powers had only just manifested, but they were so deadly that they caused the deaths of over 200 people in his hometown, including his parents and his girlfriend at high school, with the deaths being almost instantaneous. But there was no snapping involved. It wasn't a Thanos thing. No infinity gauntlets. His mutant power was basically to kill everything around him, radiating toxins and poisons that basically vaporize organic tissue. He was so dangerous, powerful, and deadly that Wolverine was sent to eliminate him as the young mutant's existence posed too much of a threat to the mutant image, as well as both humans and mutants alike, just in general. Number 1. Matthew Malloy Matthew Malloy is one of the strongest, most random mutants who now belongs to the alternate timeline of Earth 14923 because he was just too powerful to basically continue to exist. Like many of the most epic mutants, he had reality warping powers and was additionally considered Omega level in terms of his ability. Matthew's powers unfortunately were often tied to his emotions, which proved problematic and often resulted in massively destructive outbursts of energy. In the end, Tempest traveled back in time and with help from Professor X of the past, was able to prevent Matthew's parents from ever meeting, meaning that he was never born. Number 10. Blackheath Blackheath is Samuel Smithers. Yep, in the reality of 1610, Plant Man is instead a mutant. His powers are similar to that of Poison Ivy, allowing him to control plant life. Blackheath was one of the mutants who was kept in William Stryker's camps. While there, he ended up meeting and befriending Storm, and would be one of the few mutants left when Utopia came about. Number 9. Mach 2 Mach 2 is Nomi Bloom. She is kind of like the second coming of Magneto, but not as much of a villain. Or at least, she comes around in the end. And not inherently as powerful as Magneto was. She can basically affect and control magnetic fields. Later on, she would see a power boost, which would enable her to have more control over objects containing metal. Mach 2 is also known for being a rival to Kitty in terms of her leadership over the surviving mutants of Utopia. People are going to be like, what is Utopia? And I'm going to be like, don't worry. We're getting to that much later, but it's coming. It's slowly you'll get little bits of information. Number eight, Zorn. In the reality of Earth 1610, Zorn is actually Zorn, but is not the only version of Zorn. Wow, that sounded confusing. What I mean to say is that Zorn is his own person, Quan Yin, but has a sibling who is also named Zorn, but with a Z. They were each given their powers as part of the Southeast Asian Republic's Super Soldier program. Zorn, with an X, is the one who you typically see clad in the color white. He is an amazingly powerful telepath and telekinetic. While both characters may have been introduced later and have been somewhat short-lived, they are both presented as being pretty powerful during their time in the comics. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 7. Zorn this is the sibling I was telling you about. Zorn, with a Z or a Z, is Shen Yin, the brother of Zorn with an X. His powers are much darker in nature. It's actually believed in the comics that Zorn and Zorn were sort of destined to bring a sense of balance to the world and mutant kind, symbolically sort of representing yin and yang, black and white. Zorn's powers are basically akin to a black hole. He emits a black hole energy and can use his powers to manipulate gravity. In the end, Zorn sacrifices himself when he realizes that he cannot win in the war against the Children of Tomorrow. In his death, he effectively becomes a black hole in retaliation. Number 6. Colossus A strong mutant on Earth 616 and in 1610. Initially, Pyotr Rasputin did not possess super strength as part of his power set, but was given a drug called Banshee to enhance his strength as well as a job working for the Russian Mafia. Eventually, he ended up joining the X-Men, though he would leave the team on a few separate occasions. He'd managed to hold off Scarlet Witch, save a submarine that not even the Ultimates were capable of saving, and defeat Proteus, David Xavier, Xavier's son who threatened the entire world world with violence, traveling around and targeting international landmarks the world over. Differences between Colossus of Earth 1610 and that of Earth 616 is that here he isn't inherently strong, as I said before, in his steel form, but needs Banshee to give him that boost. And he's also gay. He even for a time dates fellow mutant Northstar. Number 5. Jimmy Hudson. Jimmy Hudson is the son of Wolverine. He also inherited his claws, superior senses, and regenerative healing factor. Like his dad, it's believed that his powers may actually be based in survival as opposed to just 
healing, with James being seen as adapting to survive injury or harsh environments as needed. Unlike Wolverine, Jimmy can choose to coat his claws in metal, as this is actually part of his power set, and it's believed that only his claws end up being coated, not the rest of his skeleton. Jimmy was a crucial member of the mutant resistance, which fought against Sentinel and militia attacks that threatened to wipe out the mutants. In the end, the mutants were victorious and were given a choice of going to live on their own piece of land in Utah or taking a cure for their mutation. Jimmy was one of the few mutants who decided to keep his powers. Number four, Storm. Initially in the Ultimate Universe, Storm didn't have great control over her powers and mostly got by stealing cars. But after the X-Men took her in, she learned how to control and even master her powers, allowing her to become one of the most fearsome and powerful mutants around. Ultimate Storm is so cool. Storm is so fast, she has been shown to be able to catch people who are falling in midair, dodge bullets, and even keep pace with a plane. Impressive considering planes on average travel at speeds over 540 miles per hour or over 870 kilometers per hour. That's fast. She's also likely not someone you want to tangle with, as even when she takes hits in battles, she tends to keep fighting or instinctively strike back. Using her lightning storm and weather control powers, she's also managed to defeat multiple opponents with one single attack, whether they be sentinel opponents or human opponents, and in some cases, even killing them. I think at one point she kills like 11 people at once, and it's just like, okay. Don't mess with Storm. Got it. I mean, I already knew that before from her 616, but now I really know. Number three, Jean Grey. In Ultimates, it almost seems there is nothing Jean can't do. Before she joined the X-Men, she was in a mental institution as the manifestation of her powers made her seem insane. However, Professor X would save Jean and recruit her on his X-Men team, with her being the second member. In the Ultimate Universe, we have seen Jean become possessed by what she thought was a cosmic entity referred to as the Phoenix God, and almost lose control and her sanity. The biggest problem with Jean is similar to that of her Earth 616 counterpart. Immense power threatens to basically break her mind, or at least take over her sense of sanity. In the comics, Jean is not only a skilled telepath and was even able to read Wolverine's mind, something Professor X believed wasn't even possible, but she also happens to, weirdly enough, be a skilled doctor and surgeon as well. Although I'm pretty sure she doesn't have any medical license. Say what? Jean was even shown to be capable of connecting and tapping into the multiverse to reach out and see various versions of herself. Basically, she can do everything because being a telepath is a crazy powerful. Number two, Magneto. Obviously, one of the most powerful mutants out there has to be Magneto, not just for the powers of magnetism that he wields, but also just for his influence. Magneto was the mastermind behind Ultimatum. I suppose I should use the term mastermind lightly there, as Ultimatum in general is not really seen very favorably in most fans' eyes. I admit it was controversial and caused a lot of perhaps needless death. In fact, I would say it was needless death. But you have to acknowledge just how much of a threat it painted Magneto out to be. While I'm not sure about Magneto basically committing genocide as a victim of one himself, you have to admit that this made him one of the most fearsome characters in all of the Ultimate Universe. And for Magneto, there is power in fear, even though oddly enough, it is usually fear that tends to power the hate that he often stands up against. Number one, Kitty Pride. One of the most powerful characters as a leader especially. She ends up becoming the ruler of the mutant tent nation that the mutants dub Utopia. This is a portion of land in Utah that the mutants who choose not to accept the cure are given. In fact, all those who refuse to take the cure are forced to live there. Kitty ends up fighting a war against Jean Grey in the Ultimate Universe as well because Jean wants Kitty to join the mutant nation that she was put in charge of ruling after the death of Zorn with an ex, Xion. But Kitty refuses to bring their people together. Kitty is such a good leader, she even steps down from her title as the leader of Utopia to help ease the target on her own people's backs because of her and Jean's conflict. Kitty and Utopia would end up winning that war, and Kitty would also play a crucial role in defeating Galactus as well. Also, I gotta say, that whole World War X thing, it was pretty weird. It was pretty weird, friends. Number 10, Goblin. 
Goblin was a pretty interesting and unique mutant who first appeared in the pages of Alpha Flight in issue 48 back in 1987. Goblin is the twin sister of Pathway, Laura Dean. Both siblings have been members of Alpha Flight in the past, as well as Beta Flight and Gamma Flight. While Goblin was in her mother's womb, they actually sensed early on that she was a mutant because of her unusually goblin-like appearance. Her parents wanted to abort her because of this, so her sister, Laura, who was in there with her instinctively, used her own mutant powers to teleport Goblin to Live World for her safety. For a long time, people actually thought Goblin was Pathway and that Laura could actually just transform into Goblin. Eventually, Laura and Goblin, as well as everyone else, would learn the truth about their relation to one another and their swapping of places throughout Laura's life. Goblin and Pathway have both not been seen for years since they left Apartment H. Goblin's mutation has resulted in her being super agile, possessing a unique appearance, and having a slight healing factor. It'd be cool to see, I think, both Goblin and Pathway return. They've been gone for so long. What are they up to? Where are they, where'd they go? Guess they're just roaming around in Canada? Number 9. Hijack David Bond is a mutant that I personally quite enjoyed having in the comics, but who I don't think we have seen for a few years now? Unless I completely missed him popping up on Krakoa somewhere. I don't think he's even been spotted there just yet, like not even in the background that I can recall. Though we have gotten a few technology based mutants such as Sage, Trinary, and Warlock back as major characters, Hijack still remains somewhat forgotten to the sands of time. Where did he go? David Bond is a technopath who is able to command and control all kinds of vehicles, more often in cars, but we've also seen him take control of uh, the shield helicarrier and sentinels before besides. One of the helicarriers anyways. Number 8. Copycat Copycat is someone whose real name you might recognize thanks to the Deadpool films. Vanessa Carlyle is her name, and well we got a version of her in the films who is Deadpool's love interest, which also happens in the comics, the cinematic version of Vanessa is pretty different from her comic book counterpart, who I might add also has now been perma-dead for years. Copycat in the comics is a mutant who has power similar to Mystique's, except her powers can't be used as creatively as Mystique has used hers in the past. Remember when Mystique turned into paper? That's what I'm talking about. Copycat's powers allow her to impersonate and shapeshift into other humanoid beings, even copying their powers if they have any. At least, we've seen that happen before. Her powers also make her impersonations so good that even those closest to the person would be fooled by them in theory. With mutants able to return, it would be interesting to see how Deadpool and Copycat might interact in the future if she was to be resurrected. And she's a mutant, so could happen. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn more about some forgotten mutants, you want to reminisce and look back, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Give this video a like. Honestly, I have so many more mutants that I want to talk to you about, so it's a gift for you and a gift for me when you do that. Number 7. Forget Me Not I don't think this list would be complete without Forget me not. This mutant's real name remains unknown, likely because of how his powers work. Forget me not's mutant power is that he is basically undetectable. No one, even people who have met and know him, is able to remember his existence. This makes him hard to even notice in a room, and Professor X himself had to actually set a mental alarm clock reminder, like every little while, in order to keep Forget Me Not in his mind. In the end, Forget Me Not was literally forgotten by all the mutants, and we haven't really seen or remembered him in a long, long time. He was spotted, however, momentarily in issue 9 of X Factor, for those that were really keeping an eye out for him, but that was only in the corner and background of one single panel, as far as I know. So I don't know if we can classify that as any major return for this character, who still seems to have gone unspotted by some and definitely seems to remain forgotten. Sadly. Number 6. Gentle. Gentle is a mutant from the nation of Wakanda. He made his first appearance in the 2004 series New X Men in issue 23. Nesno Abidemi had it rough when he was younger, as his father was Russian and his mother Wakandan, which meant he grew up always being treated and feeling like an outsider. His power grants him superhuman strength as his muscles can rapidly expand in size, making him super strong but also at the cost of being in immense pain, both physically from the expansion and due to psychological trauma that he carries with him from his past. Because of this, Gentle is covered in unique and iconic vibranium tattoos, which help with the pain and also help him to better control his powers, preventing him from overexerting himself and potentially dying while using them. Gentle is a really cool character, and although you may have spotted him partying it up on Krakoa, he hasn't been given much to do as a key player in any of the current X books just yet. Number 5. Bandera As someone who is currently reading the original run of Wolverine, I can't 
can't in good conscience create this list and leave out Lo Bandera, a favorite supporting character and mutant of mine from that series. Lo Bandera made her first appearance in the 80s Wolverine series in issue 19. Bandera went on an adventure with Wolverine where she helped him put a stop to the tyrannical and militaristic rule of President Caradid in Tierra Verde, also helping Wolverine to defeat an ancient monster that Caradid had unleashed known as Spore. In the end, she stayed behind in Tierra Verde to help the people there transition to a more democratic form of government. She wouldn't even get to remain alive for a decade in the comics, being killed off in the mid 90s in an issue of Captain America. The island of Krakoa and the planet Mars are now where mutants call home, and resurrection protocols are in place to bring all fallen and lost mutants back, but we still haven't spotted Bandera yet for some reason. Where's she at, the five? Bring her back! I'm looking at you, all five of you mutants that are resurrecting everyone. Get to it. Chop chop. Number four, Mimic. Mimic started off as an iconic mutant villain when he first appeared in X Men issue 19. He has resurfaced in the comics on more than one occasion and was mentioned, but we haven't seen what he's been up to lately on the mutant island nation Krakoa. All that we know is he's probably there doing something. Mimic's powers allow him to copy the powers and skill set and level of those within a certain vicinity to him. He was like the original Rogue or Hope Summers when it came to his mimicry abilities. Over time, some of the abilities he's taken, those of the original X-Men set at their power levels that they were at originally, became permanent for him and he no longer needed them nearby to use said powers. So he has those ones permanently. But it should be noted that they're capped at original level. Number three, Caliban. Caliban made a brief appearance in the 2019 X Force series in issue number one, but only so that he could basically get shot in the chest. Yeah. Otherwise, although Caliban has been one of the main Morlocks that we've come to know in the comics over the years, he hasn't really made a lasting impression in any of the current X books. More acting as a victim in the brutal Krakoan massacre that rounded out the end of that first issue. Caliban has never really been depicted as a super powerful mutant, but he is an important character in terms of the story and the history of the X-Men. His mutant powers allow him to sense and detect other mutants, and other than that, his powers are conditional really only kicking in when his life is threatened, granting him super strength and the ability to absorb and multiply the fear of others. Number two, Layla Miller. Layla Miller is the wife of Jamie Madrix, multiple man, who we've seen quite a bit throughout Krakoa and the X-Books, as Jamie's dupes generally are used to undertake various massive work efforts on the island and off the island. Whether he's aiding in Krakoan medicine and drug production or helping to sew and create everyone's Hellfire Gala outfits at the behest of Jumbo Carnation, but while Jamie has been everywhere, Layla has been almost nowhere in sight. We do get a brief glimpse of her more recently through a computer screen and then throughout a couple in-person panels in X Corp issue number three, where we learn that Jamie's and Layla's son, Davey, is about ready to take his first steps. Yay! Layla wants Jamie to leave the lab to come home and witness those steps, but Jamie responds that the launch he's supervising is too important and he can't leave. Layla frustratedly hangs up on him and Jamie later sends a dupe in his place, planning to later absorb the dupe and therefore acquire the memories of being there with his son. But other than these few moments, Layla has been MIA. I know she's busy with Davey, but it would be really cool to see her in action as she's a really cool mutant and a really cool character. So bring Layla back, please. Number one, Destiny. Destiny is probably one of the most anticipated mutants to return. She has not been forgotten by her wife and lover, Mystique, or by readers, but pretty much everyone else on Krakoa seems to be interested in forgetting about her. But still, using her journals to likely try and figure out the future to come based on her prophecies. At least I assume that that's what Moira McTaggart is doing with those journals. I especially want Destiny to come back because I just want to see her and Mystique reunited and because I kind of want Mystique to sow chaos and destruction and just generally raise hell in order to get Destiny returned. And then I want to see that payoff, like I want to see it actually come to fruition. Just sounds like a cool story. We'll likely be getting something to that effect in Inferno, but only time will tell if Destiny will return or not before, during, or afterwards. She might not return at all because Madeline Pryor is also coming back, so Inferno could be about that too. 